hi. Uh, just putting away a little something here. Bet you didn't know I had the 120 20 Crayola set. So, welcome to Travel Painting Without Leaving Home. Today we're going to work on a painting from a photograph I took on a workshop we did in Venice, Italy. Uh, it's always interesting to uh, learn to paint water. I thought what we that's what we'd focus on today. Uh, so I've done a loose sketch with the values on it, and I also ran it through my Xerox machine and just painted right on top of that just for a change. And then I have also um, drawn it on watercolor paper with a yellow ochre ink just for a change and a simple sketch. So I'm going to show you how to do the water. In this case of doing water, it's less is more. I'm going to try to just use a few colors, some of the colors that are in the building, and I am going to leave a lot of white. So I am going to start with the lightest color that I see in the water, which is a very, very pale yellow green. So I might take a mix of sap green. Uh, the water is kind of a tiny bit turquoise, so I'm going to use some phthalo blue here. And I'm going to use a lot of yellow. And I am going to put the yellow in first in just a few areas, kind of in a curvy S pattern, kind of like that. As fast as I can, I'm just going to try to whip it in. Uh, try to get like a S pattern, just weaving uh, smaller in the back and getting bigger as I go forward. Then I'm going to come back with a darker green and I'm going to put it toward the back where it's wet and bring that out a little in some of the areas where it's darker. Uh, maybe up against the wall and then it'll kind of blend in around here. Right under the boat there's kind of a um, shadow and it's kind of cast casting a shadow into the water. Anytime you paint wet over wet, put the paint right into the wet, where it's already wet, you get, it looks more like water. Then I'm going to take some darker phthalo, whoops, uh, phthalo blue, and put it in just a touch right at the bottom of the boat. It's kind of a bright blue. I can always make it darker later, but it's kind of pretty. And maybe I'll put a little of that in the front just for interest. And I'll take some darker blue, a lot of it, and put it more toward the back and to anchor the boat. So in my picture, it's dark here. It's going back dark here. It's dark here. It's dark there. And it's really dark underneath the boat where it's casting the shadow like that. And I might even take extra dark because you want your shadow to be duller and darker as it goes into the water. And you can run your brush up against it, kind of a damp brush, and just kind of smooth it in so it looks like it's fading down into the water. So we'll leave it at that now, and later on we can come back and make it, fix it up a little more as we see what's going to happen in the rest of the picture. Since I started with... Uh, the uh, front of the picture here, I think I'll continue. So I want to get that line of the boat. The boat has sort of a, a blue line on it, and that's going to help me figure out everything else. So I'm going to just do that. It's going to be thin here. I'm going to try to follow the contour. And then as it comes up here, I'm going to press down more so it gets thicker. And then I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to maybe put a little more there. 
And you could, if you wanted to see that, you could put that here if you wanted to, maybe. I don't know. Um, and as, as you can see, it's very light there. So as long as I'm still wet, I might stick a little more paint in it. So this is ultramarine blue I'm putting on for the line of the boat. I'm going to let that dry. Now, I'm going to use this also, the ultramarine blue, I'm going to put, going to mix with some burnt sienna, and I'm going to make a dark blue. And I am going to make it more blue than brown. And I am going to put that on our big door right here. Just knock this out. This is a big, important part of our picture. And let's not wait to get that dark in. Let's put that in. So I'm just going back and forth. And I'm laying it in. I left, just push it down. Tell your paper if you have to, to get it to come down seamlessly. Then it's going to come down here to this white uh, banister, whatever. And then I'm going to paint between the banister. I'm going to go underneath it like that, and underneath it like that, and so, and maybe a little bit there. Okay, then I'm going to take some same color but put more brown in it, and I'm going to lay that right over that so it looks like this is darker going on inside. We're not sure what's going on there, but something's going on. So maybe I'll put that up here as well. And then we'll put some here, same way we did the other one. You could, if you wanted to, use Miskit on that, but I don't know. So got that on there. And while you have this on your paintbrush, is there anywhere else you could use it? Well, since these are going to be brown with some burnt sienna, why don't we just put that there? Use that to make our shadow like that. We'll use that same color, the burnt sienna and the blue. That'll put our shadow in. Put that in. We'll go around. We want that the flowers to overlap. Oops, stuck my arm in the bottom part. Try not to do that. Okay, and then we'll go here. Okay, we've got that in. Bring it right down to our flowers. Then we're going to go back to that same mixture, get a lot more burnt sienna. And we could even dry brush this in, which is you put the paint on your brush, you dab some off of it, and you could try going like this and just hitting the top of the paper. So you get sort of the texture of old wood, if you like that. You could do that. And then you could add some darker color on top of that, like this. Get some fresher, darker paint on top of that, if you want, in places. And you could put that right over where you put your shadow. You could put that right in your negative shape there. You could put this over here. You want to make each one a little different, each of these brown doors a little different. So we could pull this around here. You could go around here. You could leave a highlight if you want. You got that. Hurry up. Oops, and I got that on the white, but don't worry. I'll show you how to fix that. And we could do this like this, bring this in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then what you want to do is if you do make a mistake, clean your brush off in clean water like this, dab it so it's damp and not dripping, and then what you can do is carefully lay it down where you don't want it, the paint to be, and then you could pick it up with some uh, tissue like this. You could even use the edge and just lay it down like that. That's how you fix a mistake. So that, that does pretty good. Um, up here, you could still you could still go back while it's wet and strengthen your shadow. So we could go back here. If we don't think our shadow is dark enough, we could go over it. Oops, like that, and it's still wet enough that it's gonna uh, go right in, it, and it's not gonna leave a hard line. So that's good. Okay, now we could if we wanted to. This is still damp. If we wanted to, we could 
add a little bit of this over here if we decide we want it a bit darker, just for interest, just to make it look like something's going on in there, but we're not sure what. And we don't want to divide this evenly. We want it to be uneven. So we'll leave that like that. Now we've also got these doors down here, which I've painted brown. First focus on our green doors up here. So we're going to go back to this mix, which is a pretty bright mix of phthalo. It's got some phthalo blue, and it's got some lemon yellow. Uh, you don't want it too green because you don't want it to match your uh, water. You want it to kind of be darker and knock it back. So you might put in, maybe you put in a little um, ultramarine blue to darken it down. Okay, it still reads green, but it's darker. So what you could do up here, as well as down here, is you could, well, let's do it down here as long as we're right in the neighborhood. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, you want it to be darker here. And then you could leave some lines. You want it to uh, go right up and around your um, gondola pole there. You could leave some white lines. You can brush this down. You've got to keep your hand as still as you can. You can even balance your hand. Your wrist is, if you look at my wrist, it's leaning on the table so that my paintbrush doesn't wiggle. And uh, you probably don't want to take any breaths or anything. Then over here, you could, to make it a slightly different than our other, than this door, you want to, or this window, we want to make this one a darker blue so they're not all the same. So let's put that one darker and then go like that. Here we have to go around those little funny poles, uh, little dots on the top of the poles. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we'll see. And we go around that. Could take this now and use it for the darker part up here. It's still wet enough. We can drop that right in. And there's a shadow here. And we could do this over here. And this one is yet a different color. If you wanted to be brave, you could put a little red-orange in it. Uh, that's the complement of blue-green. This is red-orange, sap green, um, scarlet lake. Oop, that made it too... That was too much scarlet lake, so now we have to go back because it made it too red. Let's go back and put in some phthalo blue to blue it down. So it reads as blue. There we go. Ooh, look how dark that is. So I'm just going to finish up these windows down here with this blue-green mixture. Ooh, and that could actually reflect the water. I'm not sure. That could be interesting. I hadn't thought about that, but that could be a happy accident. Maybe I'll slap some of that over here, too, so it matches. Just Maybe even a teeny bit over here. What the heck? Okay, now we're going to go up and... What are we going to do next? I guess, let me get, let's get back to the boat here. Okay, this is dry now. So you want this side to be duller because this is the dark side of our boat, as you can see here. So you can take a lot of your ultramarine blue and purple mix and a lot, a lot of water and just kind of make it look a little darker over here, just like dirty water. Just lay it over, even lay it over that nice blue that we painted before. You can even have a teeny bit more blue in it, just a teeny bit, see? And that'll dirty it down so that the white above it will show. You could actually put some of that in the water if you want to, to darken down that water because there's going to be a bit of a shadow down here. It's casting in the water. It'll go straight down the reflection. You could use the same blue and make your pole go down like this in the water if you want. Um, then we are going to uh, hurry up. We've already I've already shown you sap green on a lot of different things so I don't think I will show you. You already know how to paint foliage but I will show you a nice color for this area because it's kind of a pinky beige, pinky orangey beige up there so what you might want to do is take your friend yellow, the color yellow ochre, and put a teeny bit of permanent rose in it, and you get, and then a lot of water. 
and get more rust. depending on how you like it, you want to put a very watery mixture up here, like that. And just bring it on. This is supposed to be white. It's going to be white later. So we're going to put that on, put this on. So we have a contrast right next to this white. And we're almost done. We're just getting this on. We're not putting it on neatly. We want to leave some white sky holes. The building, if you wanted to, you could do the, either a darker mixture of this. We're going to darken it down later, but it's the same color as the building, but it's just darker. You could put that in there and let it fade out a little bit because it's going to kind of vignette out. And put that between there and that between there and that there. Okay, open. we got to get this down here and this down here and this down here. Okay, now I wanted to show you one last thing because we want to do this shadow, which is this shadow, because that's going to give you th three dimensions, most three dimensions. So I think we're going to do that shadow with mostly ultramarine blue. We're just going to take a lot of watery ultramarine blue, that mixture we used before for this window, and we're going to put a lot of water in it. You could, if you wanted to, also put a little purple in it, just for the heck, uh, not purple, permanent rose, which would make it, that's too pink for my taste, so I might dull it down to a little bluer, but you have a dark kind of purple shadow. So, this is what we're going to do. You've got to put on your big girl pants, and or boy pants. You've got to be fast, and you're just going to paint this shadow. So, it kind of goes out there, it goes in there, it goes over here, it's over here, it goes around there. This is very pale at this point, but that's okay, because we can make it darker. So, that's going to push that, make it look like there's a cast shadow here. And you could, if you wanted to, sort of make it in a flower shape here, because these are cast in a flower. We're also going to use it under here, under our flowers. You could also use it underneath this awning. If this is dry, which it's not, but I'm going to do it anyways for the purpose of this, I'm going to put it underneath there, and here's our purple shadow, which is nice. I'm liking this, I think. So you could have a purple shadow there, and you could bring that, that's kind of dark, so you could bring it over here, bring, make it darker over here. You could have this be a little darker over here. You could use this, this color also up here for the dark, the top of the arch. You could use it up here for the top of this arch. Since this building is pink, you could mix it in with this pink and get a darker version of the pink we used and use it for the top here. That would give us a darker vibe there. And we could also use it maybe to dull down this a little bit if we decide this is too bright. And then we could wash it out kind of like that so it's not kind of in our face, that color. So that's about, I think, the big things for now. Get started on that, and maybe I'll do another video if you need help. But basically, you've just got to repeat what you did, and you've got to make the poles the colors. I made them blue. You can make them red also to make them pop out. And you've got to put in your foliage and your awning and a couple more shadows, and you're done. So maybe I'll address that tomorrow if you need help with that. Thank you. Stay calm. Happy painting. Bye.